Maritime Made on Eastlink is presented by Nova Scotia Business Inc., helping companies large and small grow through export. Megan Archer is the artist and maker behind the beautiful products at Aflame Creations. Aflame Creations specializes in making copper enamel jewelry. I got started with enameled copper probably about 10 years ago. Um, I was working a day job and was, you know, wanting something extra to do, so I took some night classes in jewelry and pottery, and enameling was just my favorite thing. So I started doing it a lot on the side, and eventually it just became my job. Well, my journey as an artist and entrepreneur wasn't particularly planned. It's just something that happened. Um, I've always been artistic. I've always liked making things. The entrepreneurial side, uh, I never really expected that, but it's one of my favorite things about this whole process, really, is just learning as I go and having to manage multiple things. That's sort of how it's worked out for me. Um, I didn't have any formal training in anything, really. I just enjoy figuring out what I have to do next. Making the jewelry begins with designing the shapes of the earrings and necklaces, which are cut by a local metal worker. After selecting shapes for necklaces and earrings, production begins. Holes are punched where the finding will later be attached. Findings are things like chains, links, and earring hooks. The pieces are laid out on a tray, ready for the first firing in the kiln. This step burns away any possible contaminants on the copper. The kiln is a six inch cube, which is perfect for small pieces. The kiln is heated to about 1380 degrees. The pieces come out of the kiln after just a few minutes and they appear black. This is called fire scale. Next, the pieces are rinsed under water to cool. Then placed in a rubber basket, then into an acidic bath known as a pickle pot. This will remove the fire scale. Out of the pickle pot, the pieces are rinsed in water, then cleaned in a water and baking soda mixture to neutralize the acid. The pieces are dried and ready to be stamped. Using an anvil and letter stamp set, the artist begins with the middle letter of the word to help manage the spacing. The stamping is done after the first firing because the copper is much softer and takes the stamp with less effort. Now a clear coat of enamel is prepared. White enamel powder is stirred in water. It's such a fine powder, it must be mixed very slowly. Then the copper necklace pieces are laid out. A bit of water is dabbed on the back of each one and using a dropper, this clear coat is applied to the back of the piece. Both a very steady hand and the surface tension prevent it from rolling off or dripping. These will dry overnight. For my business, I make everything. So all the enameling work, um, photography, accounting, anything else that needs to be done, it's all me. So I sell farmer's markets when they're open, craft shows, uh, to some local retailers and online. Using a small hand tool, the clear coat is cleaned up as necessary around the edges and through the punched hole. This edge work ensures they remain exposed copper, an important design element. The worktop is covered in paper in preparation for the color work. Colors are chosen for the design being created. These powders contain different metal oxides which create the colors. They fire for differing amounts of time to create different color effects. A small piece of wood is laid down and the copper piece is placed on top, creating an elevated workspace. A small amount of enamel powder is spooned into a tiny sifter and tapped gently onto the face of each copper piece. This design maintains an exposed area of copper. Now each piece is carefully placed on a trivet and ready for firing. These pieces will spend a few minutes in the kiln at a temperature of roughly 1430 degrees. Because there is so much heat, the copper oxidizes before the enamel melts, creating additional design effects. Using tweezers, each piece is placed on a stone tile to continue cooling. Creating the design details is next. 
A stencil of a wave is placed over the necklace pieces and enamel is carefully sprinkled on top. Using tweezers, the stencil is removed, revealing the design. The remaining blue area is brushed, making sure to remove any white powder that could disturb the design. The pieces are placed back on trivets and into the kiln for another firing. The timing for this firing is precise. Too long and the white enamel would melt too much and run. When finished, they cool. The circular pieces are placed in the pickle pot to remove the oxidization on the center strip of the design. Once done, they're rinsed in water, then in a baking soda and water mixture to neutralize the acid. Now the designs are fully realized, it's time to clean up the edges using a Dremel tool. Next, the Dremel head is changed to a polishing tool. This really makes the copper shine. The copper area in the middle of the design is covered in clear lacquer to prevent it from tarnishing over time. The artist continues on the workbench, creating the enamel designs on two pair of earrings. These blue enamel powders will become different colors during firing. The pieces are loaded on a tray and into the kiln. Once finished, as the pieces cool, the color continues to change slightly until they cool to the final color. A quick dip in the pickle pot removes any fire scale. Now the finished earring and necklace pieces are ready for the tumbler. Water and dish soap are placed inside the drum along with the jewelry and steel shot. The tumbling action cleans and polishes. The finished shiny pieces are ready for attaching the findings. Using pliers in one hand and a jump ring opener on her thumb, jump rings, chains and hoops are attached. A flame creations can be found at retailers, local markets in Nova Scotia, and at their online store. All things considered, during, you know, the past year with COVID, uh, business has been okay. People have been really supportive. Any opportunity to come out and buy in person, like if there's a little market or um, craft shows before they got cancelled, people were coming out. And when everything did get cancelled, uh, people are ordering online, really a lot of online orders, so it's been great. The future for Flame Creations, I think, will be a little bit different. Um, most people seem to be moving to buying online, so I'd like to focus on that more. Um, I do sell to some shops in the rest of Canada, like in other provinces, and there's a lot more that I could pursue there as well as um, some of the wholesaler platforms online where most of the clients are in the US. Uh, so that's something I'm looking into as well.